feature for the YouTube channel. And if you read the title, and you guessed right. Today, I'll be conducting an interview with I'll the co-host of the channel, the Crown Prince himself. Meet Please give yourself a proper introduction, dear sir. Woo! Hello, everyone, and thank you for that um, marvelous introduction. It's probably more than I deserve. Anyways, but yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Miko Tan. I'm the chairman of Toho Fest, and uh, it's great to be here with you. Um, so I hope everyone here has been doing well, and uh, I'm looking forward to this. Alrighty. So without further ado, I believe it's time to get into the questions, my good sir. Straight on in. All right. Alrighty. So, given that it's the new year and we're finally done with January, I'd say this is a perfect time to reflect on the past year and the past convention for Toho Fest 2023. How do you feel that one turned out? Wow, that's a pretty big question. Well, I mean, um, to me, it's still uh, just absolutely surreal and amazing, really, how Toho Fest 2023 turned out. It turned out a lot bigger uh, than any one of us could have ever hoped for. Uh, when we started planning for Toho 2023 back in uh, in spring of 2011, so we, we, were, we were planning it for about two years. And like I said, there were a lot of unknown factors at that time. And uh, we were thinking, well, we did a lot of community outreach, a lot of surveys to figure to try to figure out what is it that fans and attend potential attendees uh, would be looking forward to. And we came up with was that was basically what you guys everyone saw at Toll Fest 2023 mm -hmm. and I can be very happy to say that when we estimate attendees we estimate anywhere from you know 650 700 maybe a high of 750 attendee max and the final count was uh just north of 800 so way beyond what anyone of us amazing and I want to thank of course um all of our staff and all of the vendors, the artists, you know, the guests, uh, and of course you guys, you know, the attendees and the community not to support us this year, in the last year, and uh, we couldn't have done it without without everyone. And like I said, um, we are looking forward to twenty twenty four. Wonderful, okay. wonderful indeed. Wonderful. I'm sure a lot of us, both here on the staff and in the community, are also looking forward to Toho Fest twenty twenty four. Mm -hmm. So, in comparison to last year's, how do you feel about the turnout for this year's? What have we seen with pre-registration so far? So far, uh, as of right now, I know we have over 400 uh, attendees uh, pre-registered. Pre wow. um, so, of course, it's difficult to say what our final number is right now, but we are targeting anywhere, we're estimating anywhere from 1,200 to 1,400 attendees uh, this year. It's going to be um, quite something, and we've um, definitely uh, tried to expand a little bit to uh, in anticipation of that. What kind of expansion do you mind okay. elaborating? Yeah, sure. Um, so we were able to get um, a certain amount of space or from the venue, the venue is actually quite large. Um, it's got like a lot of um, these studios, a lot of um, like little classrooms, and um, like several theaters. Basically, it's designed to do like dance productions, theater productions, so on and so forth. So we were able to expand to um, uh, to one of the other plazas. And we were um, able to expand the artist alley because the artist alley the first year was way too small and cramped. You know, there was yeah. high demands. Like, so we're definitely looking forward to a bigger artist alley this year. Okay, that makes sense. Mm hmm. Are we getting a lot more artists this year? Yes, we are. Oh. About 30 artists around, right? No, as opposed to 20. That's a lot of artists. Mm hmm. So what would you say is like the ratio between returning ratio artists and new artists. artists where this would be their first Toho Fest? Ooh, from from what I've seen, most of the artists I believe are returning artists. Since again, you know, um 
we are obviously a Toho event, and those artists artists are um, are obviously uh, within that community. But of course, we're going to have several new artists come in as well too. Uh, lots of new vendors and such. So definitely pretty um, pretty amazing. Hmm, okay. You mind giving a couple of names of the new vendors? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, first go over the artists. So uh, Cloudy and Freezex, they're the two official artists. So they, of course, will be back. Um, I know what's um, Pumpkin and Lynn, they're new artists. Uh, Seekin, she did the badge art for last year. So she's going to be an artist now this year. So definitely oh. forward to that. Um, but I know those two off the top of my head. So new vendors this year. Um, I know that um, I keep forgetting the name, but the uh, the studio that made Misty is Izakaya ah, going to be the one from China. Be, correct. correct. Ah. Uh, no, they're going to be here. Um, we got a um, we do have a uh, we also have another group that uh, they're going to be running a drink stand based off of said game, based off of said Misty Z Ah, that sounds exciting. Mm-hmm. They're looking forward to that. Like straight from the game or something a little bit of... Uh... Drinks probably inspired from the game. Inspired, okay. Mm-hmm, that's, what I, that's the best way to put that. So definitely look forward to that because obviously with uh, more people, well, we're going to need more food, we're going to need more drinks and such, so... Yeah, that makes sense. You got to some reason. Some reason to feed. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a big spotlight right there with the Misty Azizakaya Sakaya crew. Any other vendors that we should have to look at? Uh, let's see. Um, before, I can't think of... Uh, I, I don't know all of them right off the top of my head. I know the the cosplay ambassadors, they will be having, um, mm -hmm. they'll be having their booth again. I know um, Meta Kitty, she will be selling her prints again. I believe um, Mystical Lala, she will definitely have a lot more of her purple sprites. Mm -hmm. So definitely check those mm -hmm. out. And I know uh, Pun will have her booth next to there, same as last year. Okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I know uh, one of our returning vendors, she's also been a huge supporter of the organization. Um, artist collaboration experience or ACE. Um, uh, apparently, um, he's got a little uh, surprise for the vendors. I'll let him uh, announce it. Hmm. All right. We'll wait for that then. Well, mm -hmm. So, we've seen from the vendors and the artists. What about from the gaming portion of the convention? So far, um, I believe there's going to be, uh, I think there's going to be a total 19. Set up. I do not know if there's going to be tournaments or not. I know, I believe our gaming hall director, Nocturno Joey, he should be putting that out fairly soon. He's trying to get all that stuff ready to go. Um, same thing, we're going to be, uh, since we now have expanded room, we also now have a separate room dedicated for, uh, for example, for the fan game. Oh, just for the fan mm -hmm. game. Okay. I like the sound of that. Games will be here. So I know Fujiwara Phoenix is also returning. I know there's two more. I keep forgetting which ones off my head. Um, and I know that the uh, Toho Game Dev group, they also will have like four tables available. Um, as well as the group called Mystery Park Bay. They'll have like a small setup there as well, too. I look forward to that. Okay. Mystery Park Bay. Mm-hmm. Do you have any examples of what uh, games that Mystery Parfait has done? It's a bit of an unfamiliar name for me. Um, they have, uh, they mostly do board games. Oh. They don't do, I don't think they've made electronic, I think they've done like some board games, they've done some card games. Um, I think one of them, one of the members is bringing the Don Maku set up. I could be wrong about that one. Oh, I know the Don Maku set. So those were the guys who made that. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Of course, we all know about Damaku. Yes, we all know about yes. Damaku. It's in the rules. <laughs> yeah. So, all of this, from the vendors to the artist numbers increasing to the new stuff with the gaming portion, uh, all this seems like a lot to cram into two days. 
Not to mention, we don't even know what's going to happen for the concert. Hmm. So, how do you and the staff plan to work all this in? How did you schedule, how did you organize the programming schedule to fit all the new increases? So, we've got two days, as you mentioned, and the best thing what we're doing is uh, figure out, like, all the main programming first. Like, any of, do we have any major concerts, any major guests? Um, we are do we will be doing a concert again on Saturday. It's the same as same as uh last year. Um time is gonna be um we're gonna be expanding the scope of it. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Right. But then but then we kinda have to work our way backwards from that because we obviously still have we still plan on having a cosmic contest. Um and again we should be announcing that hopefully next month pretty soon. Mm-hmm. Um, also, uh, we want to, we obviously have several performers. We also should be, be announcing fairly soon as well. Those are going to be stacked, like, you know, on the, um, on the Torino Festival Plaza. And we will also be um, trying to alternate between that and the, uh, the panels and such. So it's hard trying to balance, you know, all these different you know, aspects and stuff and try not to have stuff overlap each other. Right, right. But, mm-hmm. but. But essentially, the way how we do it is we basically start, we, we, we essentially have to kind of work back. So, meaning that we have to kind of figure out like, you know, like the biggest stuff first because those basically cannot move. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then basically start to fill in, you know, what can we do? What can we go in from there at that point? Hmm. All right. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Uh, so, working backwards to try and fit everything in. Hmm. Correct, yes. Reminds me of, you know, putting the rocks first in the bottle and then the sand. That way everything fits. Kind of, yeah. So, um, it's also like what we said before, um, like we always like to end with a bang. End with a bang. So you want to make sure that that, that your ending is good, but you have to somehow like build up to that. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna expect this Toho Fest to be like a roller coaster ride, <laughs> with what you're saying. Mm. So, we know about the, the guests coming in for next uh, from last year. Uh, from All last the year, like Ponderful, uh, Sea Kitten coming in as an artist, Freeze X, Fujiwara Phoenix, and we know about th- some new guys coming in, like the Toho Game Devs and a lot of the other artists. Yeah. Yeah, the, so, what about, um, the most, huh? what about the more prominent ads? The more prominent ads, well, um, so this year we've uh, announced Shihori, uh, like, uh, for those of you who are not aware of Shihori, um, there's several of the songs uh, um, on the A1 uh, sound, uh, series soundtracks, the, on the Oh Your Beat uh, series. Mm-hmm. Um, she has been doing uh, more J-pop stuff recently, but you know she uh, we were able to uh, book her as a guest of so performing, um, and uh, we obviously we have a returning performer uh, guest, um, obviously Eurobeat. Yes. So, because yes. let's be honest, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's easily a crowd favorite. Mm-hmm. You know, easily a crowd favorite. Uh, the concert was just absolutely hyped, you know, so, um, I would say, yeah, it did start off a little bit slow at first, but, like, you know, it picked up speed very quickly, um, and, um, like, for many fans and attendees, that concert was, like, the highlight of the best 20 mm-hmm. so, yeah. it got more on the way, too. Just the way so Shiori's going to be sharing the uh, Shiori. Perhaps, most likely. Most likely. Bring it on. Alrighty. So right. I suppose <laughs> whatever prominent acts you're coming to will be announced later. Is that correct? Correct. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess we'll just have to find out. Correct. Correct. Alrighty. So, yeah, and of course, you know, for those of you who 
may not necessarily have uh, Twitter, uh, you can, of course, sign up for our Tengu newsletter run by yours truly. I am so, Kaminaru! <laughs> yeah. So be sure to check out and sign up for that. More information. Right. More information. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah, so you could sign up for like that. Uh, Twitter is um, our main for news sources as well. Um, so definitely get our news sources from there as well. Um, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook, of course we have our website, tofest.org. Um, and that'll, you know, take you to all of the uh, sites. That'll take you, that'll give you a, a lot of information. We've got um, FAQs there, convention information, guidelines, uh, even a intro to Toho project page. Definitely check it out if you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that way anyone, even if they just got into Toho or they don't even know, but they want to learn more, anyone's welcome to this convention. Correct. And one of the, one of the, um, one of the key points we wanted to focus on for Toho Fest mm -hmm. is we wanted to be open to all fans. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, now, of course, on one, on one side, you've got like your, Dedicated, you know, your diehard fans, they know, like, they can name all the characters, they can hum all the tunes, they know the lyrics, they so much to a lot of the remixes, um, they know, like, they know all the lore and such, that's amazing, too. But, of course, on the opposite end, you've got people who are relatively new to Toho, and they might have seen, like, some of the memes, they might have heard of Bad Apple, as, you know, perhaps, like, I you know, like, 80, 90% of the community, you know, fans get into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. people who are like, you know, new fans, people like, you know, they might have heard bits and pieces of it, but they don't really understand, they're like, they're not really understanding what it is or where it comes from, you know, but they're interested in, you know, that they wanted to attend the event to learn more about it. And one thing we wanted to definitely showcase with Toho Fest is that there is such a huge, um, there's such a huge range, range. of aspect of the, of the total community um there's obviously like the stuff like there's obviously like the cosplay and the and, and the music that's a huge part of the community um there's obviously a good chunk of the uh there's obviously a lot of artists which makes because again Zunsai, he gave the okay to um for artists and creators to create their own dojin or you know you to use that IP to use his characters, mm -hmm. um, with certain caveats. Yes. With so there's yes. that, but of course there's obviously you know we always have a huge gaming community, fan game community. We obviously have a huge fumo community. Well, so there's so many different aspects of Toho, of the Toho series. Um, yeah, the memes are part of it, and that's probably like the, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, there's so, so much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So there's definitely going to be that range. It's going to be, you know, shown, especially through the amount of panels. That's something else that I wanted to get into. Do we have any returning panels? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think there's going to be, I think there's maybe one or two hmm. returning panels, but this, from what I've seen from the application, are going to be new panels. So they're going to be covering like different aspects. I think one of them is going to be covering like the lore um, of a certain series of a certain like fan game series. Mm -hmm. um, the one covers, I think, um, more of like the mythologies of yokai. I think uh, I, I have to go back. Hmm. But there are there are going to be quite a few. Though. Alrighty, mostly new. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Say, Miko Tan. Uh, if you were to organize yourself a panel, you know, say you weren't the chairman, what kind of panel would you put for Toho Fest? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a tough question right off the bat. I mean, I wouldn't mind doing like a, I, love, I really like the history and the um, lore of the yokai. I definitely probably would do uh would do that um i definitely wouldn't mind um doing a um doing a panel about like exploring all the different religions and uh the spirituality of 
within within the world within the world tour since that does play a huge part in um in the world so hmm. uh, i i thought i always thought that would that would be kind of interesting to do and such so yeah it would be pretty but interesting like i said it's not time for that unfortunately <laughs> someone else wants to do it uh, you're more than willing to do it hmm. okay okay probably if i had some time on my hands i'd set up a journalism panel and give it a little workshop I think that would be pretty fun. Perhaps, yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. So, you know, with the talk about being welcome to all newcomers, newcomers. all kinds of but, things, from oh. vets to newcomers to people who just know about the means, how would you say, how would you describe Toho Fest for newcomers? So, the best way that I would describe Toho Fest for newcomers is that it is a festival celebrating the whole project series um and all its various aspects not just the series itself but the community and um you can see it as basically a gathering point for people to uh, meet um with like-minded fans but also to um also meet like you know their favorite you no know, their favorite creators or artists vendors or even the guests you know, there's not, and also just to be able to kind of shop around for, you know, a Toho merchandise. It is quite difficult nowadays to find any Toho merchandise. I don't want that any place. Right. So like a scavenger hunt, you got to try and find something. Yeah. So, yeah. but you're guaranteed to find something at Toho Fest now. That's a good guarantee to have. And especially if you're trying mm -hmm. to sell things domestically, it's a little bit tough unless you do, you know, you have the money for shipping. That's true. Of course, you could do that too. But guess what? They're going to charge you for the for, for the shipping. So yeah, yeah. Yep. Hmm. You know, it's pretty fun to shop for merch. Like, it's an experience. You don't realize how much fun it is to have something of your favorite series and own it, and you don't realize it until you, you get that first piece of merch. You know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um. One of the things that was really quite interesting mm -hmm. for last year was that we had a lot of artists and vendors that actually didn't bring enough merch and ended up selling out in six hours. Six hours? Six hours. Holy Meaning God. that they're there for the whole, they're, they're technically there for, for both days and they sold out. So therefore, it's like they're not really bound to their table anymore. So like, why? By the, I know by the time, like, I had a break around, I want to say, 4 o'clock? Mm-hmm. But it's like 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock? A lot of places I knew, they already sold out. Huh. Huh? Oh, I, I want to go buy some stuff. Well, you know, that oh. sets up the expectations. They are going to go out, so I'm guessing there's going to be a lot more this year, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We did recommend to a lot of the artists and vendors to basically triple production. There's gonna be more people and there's gonna be more demand, so mm. Yep. More demand means more supply. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with all that tripling production and everything for this year, how big do you think Tofest's gonna get for next year in the future? Like twenty five, twenty six? Ooh, that's that remains to be seen. Mm. I mean, we have to you know. I mean, we would like to see it grow bigger and bigger. We would like to get bigger, you know, uh, from Japan, of course. But you know, we got to do it. You know, we got to do it carefully. Yeah, feel very easy to um, overstretch. Mm. Yeah. So, as much as we would like to expand quickly and such, but again, you know, it, it has to be done in the proper. Way. It's like, you don't want to run out of funds and resources before you get too big, right? Correct. Yeah. So, uh, I know this has been asked a few times. I don't necessarily mind no answering it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions on our FAQs was, will TOLFES ever expand outside of Los Angeles? And it's not that I don't think it will ever happen, but in the foreseeable future, we're probably going to be you know, at our current location for quite some 
time because it is, um, again, it is quite the challenge to expand to another location. I mean, because LA is, um, you know, like I said, it's our home. LA, as I mentioned before, is our home base. A lot of our team is based here. A lot of our assets and supplies are also based. So uh, we're familiar with the venues here. We know how to work it now. Um, if we were to expand to a different city, to different states, then you're talking not just about money, you could say, but more like, well, do we need to have a, are we going to be able to build a separate team for that? You know, then, okay, which state, which city? What are the rules? You know, are we going to be able to find a venue which is similar to the Torrance Cultural Arts Center? Like one thing we was um, we were really lucky with um, Delta Sierra, one of our committee members. Mm -hmm. He was the one who found the uh, Torrance Cultural Arts Center because we found there was there was a, a lot of benefits to that. It was within fifteen mile radius of LAX, so it makes it easier for people to fly into LAX. To either the uh, you know, carpool or taxi to get to the venue. Mm -hmm. uh, it also has free parking. You know, there's a lot of both indoor and outdoor space. It's very versatile, and uh, it's of course got it has a beautiful Jap built-in Japanese garden yeah. for, for oh, you know for photo shoot and such. Yeah. So, with all that being said, it's more like you know, is there a venue in a different city? That has similar vibes to all that. It has all those uh, amenities to it. They're going to be pretty hard to find. So that's some, you know, a lot of research on going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it just it is what it is. Hmm. I mm -hmm. understand that. There's there's a lot of logistics that go into you know expanding into different bases. Correct. Hmm. So I'm not saying you know to anyone you know if they want to be inspired to do that, great. You know. The, you know, if you want us to help them out, to, you know, consult with us, again, I've got no issue with that. We've got no issue with that. Hmm. But I'm also going to give you, give whoever is wanting to do that, you know, fair warning that it's a lot of time and a lot, and a lot of, and a lot of logistics. You can be the most passionate total fan. We have a lot of passionate fans, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But how many of those fans also have the necessary skill set, the necessary experience to be able to pull off something on this scale? So that's another key thing. Hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Though, I think we'll be seeing a lot of passionate and skilled Toho fans in the, in the future. Yeah, it's just a, a hope in my eyes, but I think it'll be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, as a consultant, you'll kind of be like, the torch, holding up the torch for future Toho fans to, you know, bring together communities, just like Toho Fest did in Torrance or, you know, in North America in general, bringing all these people together. Um, how do you feel about being that source of inspiration for fu the future generation? Well, I'm flattered that I'm a source of inspiration. <laughs> and if anyone sees me that, I mean, if anyone sees me that way, sure. Um... But I suppose, like, for me, it's not just a matter of being, like, a rallying point. If you want to call it that. Like, yeah, you know, it works because, you know, Tofus is, again, meant as a, it's meant as, like, a gathering place and as a hub. Um, and for those of you um who you know are thinking are considering joining or, or, or like visiting? We also do have a Tofest Discord. You can find that a uh, link on our website, and uh, it's become like a um, sort of like a main gathering point for fans from like all over the world. I think you know right now there's um, I believe there is a bunch of people in like the voice call just you know chatting. You know we have gaming and such, and um, it's. Uh, it is a source of inspiration, at least. Maybe not me 
directly per se, but the fact that um, I know there was a, there were a lot of people, a small group of people, mm-hmm. who they started meeting up. They started to actually uh, make plans to physically meet up in other you know, locations. Um, and um, as to like the activities that goes on on the Discord, we've had a lot of karaoke nights. We've had like game nights. We've had um, like the uh, the wrestling nights. That, that one's always been super popular. Oh, yeah. And all that was all organized by the community. I never organized any of that stuff. I didn't know it was not the mods. It was not the community. It was not the staff. It was all on the community. So I think what we're going to show you that is that, oh, you know, maybe people are going to be skeptical. Maybe you know people are going to be you know a little nervous, and I understand that. At the same time, we want to show that there is value, especially after you know the height of COVID nineteen. Yeah, the height. Uh, there is, that there is value in meeting face to face with fellow Toho fans and sh- knowing and just talking with them and then realizing, wow, that there are you know a lot of people that are like incredibly chill and also incredibly talented. So there's definitely that sense of camaraderie that uh, and community, and that's something else that. Um, uh, last year play out at Opus that um, I, I'm sorry to say a lot of conventions I feel have kind of lost that you know, because they've gotten so much bigger uh, it is definitely um, I'm definitely I'm, I'm definitely glad that people are sort of taking that into account So I guess we've kind of hit that sweet spot where we're gathering a lot of people, but we haven't gotten so big that we lost that sense of community, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, will we start to lose that community as we grow bigger and bigger? Most likely. Yeah, but we'll deal with that when, when the time comes. All right. Hmm. I wonder, what exactly led you to the idea of Toho Fest in the first place? What was your inspiration? Ooh, I don't tell the story very often, but I remember, I remember years ago, I was doing college, I, um, well, friends of mine, they were uh, exchange students from Japan. They're the ones that introduced me to Toho and introduced me to the games. And I found it down, it was like, very different than I had expected because I um, I didn't really understand, of course, what Toho was. I mean, I just knew it was a video game series, um, had some really amazing music, but I just didn't know much about it. And that was about the same time where I got into cosplay and going to convention. And um, I was so surprised when he went to Ray Tyson, mm-hmm. and he told me about it. I was like, wait a second. There is a whole convention dedicated to just Toho? Yep. What? Because here in the United States, we're used to seeing com- more general conventions, like a sci-fi convention, an anime convention, a video game, but those are very general conventions. Very broad. But not like, you know, focus on to one series. Mm-hmm. And to see all that, and to see like, wow, look at, like, you know, that, that means if you're a artist and you are you can sell here and you know, look at all the, the crazy cosplays and you get to meet all these amazing music circles. Wow. And then the, the wheels in my head started to turn, you know, and it wasn't, it was a few years later where I saw that during AWA 2013, they were able to get Zunsan. That was his first time, I believe, coming to the United States. And I was thinking to myself, if they can pull that off, wouldn't it be amazing to get 
to create a to you know for us to have a total event here in the West and eventually bring Sunsan to that event. Hmm. And I start and the wheels started in, in my head started turning. Well, if they can do it, why can't we do it? Yeah. You know? Hmm. I'll just say it's been quite a journey for me. For a lot of people. Yeah. All I can say about that. A lot of people on the team also had that journey too, right? Correct, yes. Hmm. So but that of course that is one of our goals is to bring Zunsan to GoFest eventually. Maybe sooner rather than later, we'll see. Yeah. Who knows? I think that would be amazing. Oh yeah. Though I'd also be nervous as hell. Heck. Yeah. It's like, uh, how are we going to introduce him? Or like, how are we going to set him up? Oh, but thinking about it. Well, well I don't know. I mean, I. Uh, that's a discussion for another time. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll cross that bridge <laughs> when we get there. <laughs> Probably next year, twenty six. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Hmm. So, about, hmm. So, did your inspiration or like, hmm, did your inspiration for Toho Fest, you know, seeing Z Zunsan come into AWA? Uh, hmm. It was a combination of that and also seeing it at Ray Tai Oh, yeah. And I, I figured. Yeah, and I sort of figured it's like, well, there isn't anything like that, you know, in the you know on the Western Hemisphere as far as I'm aware of. So as far as I'm aware of, we are in fact the largest and only total of focused event on the Western Hemisphere for now. For now. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Because, you know. With all the people that are coming up with things, coming up with all these events in the community, you know, mm -hmm. they have that own drive. I feel like there's yeah. going to be an inertia in, it, in the next couple of years. Yeah, well, we definitely helping. We're definitely helping hoping for that. Yeah. So, um, and like I said, we'll definitely do our best. You know, people know where to reach us, mm -hmm. so we'll definitely be there to help try and help that out when we can. An interesting thing. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder. So it was your friend that in, uh, brought you into Toho, right? Mm -hmm. hmm. What led to the the Miko Tan cost? The, the persona of the true administrator. <laughs> Just caught my mind. Uh, this one. This was a. This was a really fun question. So I've answered this question a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh, before, but you know, I'll always answer. I'm always, always answer it. Mm -hmm. So, long story short, I started to gravitate towards Miko and to her cosplay because of her portrayal, her design in Hopeless Masquerade. So, her normal design, she's got like her normal outfit. It's okay. Her theme is not bad. Uh, as defending for a boss character for like a six stage boss, um, but it really it wasn't until like she got the cape that uh, it was like wow that looks so cool I want to cosplay a character with the cape like that. So that led me to that one, mm -hmm. and you know the more I go down her route, the more I started to learn of her backstory. The more I learn about her. Um, you know her lore mm -hmm. she just kind of kept growing on and because so and i haven't looked i've never really looked back since so and okay so whenever my approach to cosplay is that i want to pick a character that i like mm -hmm. uh maybe has a cool design and everything but also i want to I want to do the character just yeah you no know, and out of all the 200 some odd characters within the whole project 
I feel like Miko is probably the closest to me in terms of um in terms of skill set, in terms of personality. Now, 10 years ago, 10, 11 years ago, when I first started cosplaying her, mm-hmm. yes, it's been a while since I have. Oh, yeah. Did I ever expect to find myself you know, in this position? No, of course not. <laughs> but now you're here. You climbed the ladder. I know. It's so we. It's just a really odd feeling. And um, I don't mind sharing this with people is like so um what's really interesting about you know so as you know miko she's you know, her legend her title is called uh, her song title is called shoulder pool legend true administrator mm-hmm. so currently right now i'm going for my master's uh doing my master's program i should be done within a year mm-hmm. but by the end of this year you know, my fingers and such yeah guess what and guess what i'm getting my master's in master's of public administration it's fate. I'm just laughing because, like, again, it's just the more I go down that route, it feels like the more I'm becoming like her. Yeah. I feel that. I feel that, yeah. You know, I wanted to be a scientist as a kid, but then <laughs> I don't know what happened. I just realized I have a bit of a knack for, you know, reporting, doing an interview, even when I. I did like a little fake video of a, a a news weather report as a kid, and uh, you know this was way before you know I uh, I became the Aya as I'm known on the Discord server the Aya, and you know at some point you know first year of college it probably seems like baby years compared to you. Uh, you know they were putting up a there was a help wanted sign for the student publications. And it was around this time when I was just getting into Toho. I was like a, a good year in. I say, you know what would be really funny as a joke to tell my friends? And so I applied. I got in. I really enjoyed it. And I'm not sure if it was because I like Aya that I became a journalist or, you know, the other way around where I kind of always had that journalism in me and that's why I kind of felt... Like Aya was for me, for real, for real. I don't know. Look at where where the two of us are now, huh? I don't know, but who would have thunk it? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but but going back, I mean, I think that's why a lot of people gravitate towards, you know, certain characters in the Total Project series because, like I said, the cast is so you know wide, it's so varied. Yeah. You know, a lot of them have very unique designs and very unique personalities and mm-hmm. such. And naturally, at that point, you know, I think uh, there are certain people uh, who we would naturally gravitate towards a certain character or a group of characters because we really do appreciate their lore, we appreciate what they do, or we feel like, you know, a certain sense of connection to them. Like, I mean, um, I know that there's quite a few, uh, I know, I think there's, I have met um, a couple of engineers. Of course, naturally gravitate toward Notori, for example. Yeah. Um, I know um, there's quite a few people. I know it's just given you know, their backgrounds had to go through, go through. They naturally gravitate towards people like Alice. Yeah. Um, or they naturally gravitate towards like uh, like a clown piece or like Cherno, you know, or um, like you know, like like us, Aya and Miko. Right. Yeah. Um, and of course, I, um, it, yeah. And I, and it's just one of those things where, um, so, but to kind of bring it back to 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 your question of why I kind of gravitate towards Miko, it's a, due to a combination of her design, of her lore, her history, and also just because of her personality and skill set, which is I guess similar to mine. Um, that's why I gravitated towards her, at least for this particular version, which you will see at, uh, at Toho Fest in person. Yeah. Um, one of the guys in the server, he showed it to me, um, the, uh, the character art, the alternate outfit from, uh, from Lost World. And I thought, yeah. wow, that outfit looks so cool. I've done, I haven't done a variation outfit of, of Miko, and I thought, if I'm going to do one, it's got to be that. Looks a bit complicated, though. 
Yeah, it takes around. It's uh, like there's like twenty pieces to this outfit, and it's uh, it's not easy to put on. Hmm. Makes me so think many parts to it. Lucky, huh? Yeah, simple. It was a bastard of a time to try and sew on this part, but I'm I'm really mm -hmm. glad I did it. It pops off. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, was there any other things you wanted to ask me, uh, whether in regards to me, in regards to the GoFest 2024? Hmm. Because we're less than um, less than 90 days away now. Which is, oh, gosh. The 100-day announcement was 10 days ago. That makes it 90. Mm-hmm. Oh, time flies. <laughs> time does fly indeed. Oh, jeez. Oh, Oh, you know what else? Flip, yeah. You know what something else that flies? Hmm. Gee, I wonder. I wonder what flies. Technically, every character in Total Project. True, but specifically this little birdie that told me something. You're planning some sort of campaign upon Toho Fest 2024. Why? Yes, I did. So very recently, early this year, I have actually announced my candidacy. For human village president for 2020 for 2024 you're gonna have a bit of competition with the buddhists oh i'm well aware of that mm. so let's just say i have a little that's why i had this little trick up my sleeve oh. so um yep. and yes uh so if i'm elected as human village president we are going to make humans great again Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. So, what does that mean for the yokai? Hmm? That's a big well, it all depends. Right? Well, it all depends, right? So, I mean, um, you know, if we wanted to, um, if, the, if the yokai want to, they decide not to be cooperative with us. Well, we'll have to deal with that. But if they are willing to cooperate with us, if they're willing to, uh, you know, for the sake of a better, you know, Gensokyo, then you know, by all means, you know, we're willing to extend our olive branch, extend olive branch to, uh, to them, and uh, we're willing to work with them. Hmm. If not, there will be there will be um, there could be dire consequences. That's I will say that. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got a ton of people to com compete with in terms of the village. You got the Morias, you got the Hakure, you got the Mioren. Hmm, a lot of parties there. But, you know, we'll see what the mountain says about that. Hmm, we'll see. We'll see, yeah. But good luck with your campaign. You know, if you, you're giving out free food, that might help a bit. For the idea, of keep that in mind. I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but uh, hmm, I believe that's it in terms of personal questions. Do you have any uh, <laughs> statements you'd like to say about Toho Plus twenty twenty four and your hopes for it? Yeah. So again, I'm. Um, any closing statements would be that um, again we are. Just basically, hey, you know, we've got a lot planned. Mm -hmm. We've got um, a lot of amazing acts, performers, and uh, some exciting news on the horizon very soon. So, um, and things are actually looking, you know, pretty good hmm. right now. So, um, we'll definitely be on the lookout and definitely, you know, stay up to tune um, to keep up to date with our newsletters, information, social media. And um, like I said, I definitely wish uh, everyone, you know, well, and uh, to hopefully see everyone at uh, Tollfest 2024 later this year on April 27th to the 28th uh, in Torrance, California. So thank you all so, thank you so much. Hmm. All right. Hmm? Thank you, Mika Khan. This has been a great interview and I got a lot of information down. Thank you for your time. Hmm. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Of course. 
you've had it right there, folks. Mr. Mikota himself, the Crown Prince, Chairman of Tomo Fest, with a wonderful, wonderful interview today. And you'll be able to see that YouTube channel. And be sure to like and subscribe to get more information. Follow all our socials. And have a happy 90 days, estimatedly, until Toho Fest 2024. This is Ayashambe Maru, signing out. <laughs>